Howdy, howdy, folks. Once again, this is Donnie coming at you with yet another Linux security report. And last week, I brought you news about this WannaCry or WannaCrypt ransomware, which infects Windows machines via the SMB version 1 protocol. And the reason I made that video about a Windows problem is because somebody posted a bogus article about how the WannaCry or WannaCrypt, whatever you want to call it, can it infect Linux machines through the Wine translation layer, which is designed to allow Linux machines to run Windows programs. So I did a little research on that, and I found an article which totally debunked that. So you know, anybody who's worried about this want to cry or want to crypt infecting Linux machines, you know, you know, no, don't worry about that. It's not going to infect Linux machines through the Wine protocol. However, just a few days after I made that video, guess what happens? Now we have a seven-year-old Samba flaw, which lets hackers access thousands of Linux PCs remotely. And Samba is the free open source implementation of the SMB protocol. Now, legend has it that Microsoft did not want to help the Linux people or the, uh, the Samba people to make this software. So basically, the Samba people had to take the SMB protocol, the SMB software from Microsoft and reverse engineer it and just figure out their own implementation of it. But the Samba software uses the SMB protocol, the same SMB protocol that Windows uses, in order to share folders from Linux machines. Well, not just Linux, but different types of Unix machines as well. And you can see here also IBM System 390, OpenVMS. It's also been ported back to OS2 years ago. But, uh, uh, but the point is, the Samba uses this SMB protocol to allow all these different non-Windows machines to share folders out with Windows machines. And not just folders, but printers as well. And you can also use the Samba to set up like Windows type domain controllers on non-Windows machines. So it, it's really fairly versatile. But this flaw has been in there for seven years, ever since March 1st, 2010, and it affects all versions newer than Samba 3.5. And all the versions of Samba from 3.5 onwards are vulnerable to a remote code execution vulnerability, allowing a malicious client to upload a shared library to a writable share and then cause the server to load and execute it, the Samba people wrote in an advisory published Wednesday. So this is not necessarily a ransomware type of thing as the WannaCry is, although I suppose maybe it could be, but uh, this is even more malicious because with this, the attackers could actually break in through the Samba protocol and take control of the machine. Now, I've never seen that done on a Linux machine or a Unix machine, but I've done it plenty of times on Windows machines. If you have a Windows machine, uh, Windows 2000, Windows XP, Windows Server 2003, an unpatched copy of Windows Server 2008, you can easily, with about two minutes worth of effort, you know, pull up Metasploit, pull up the right attack and the right payload, and you can break into those Windows machines and you can take control of the whole thing. I mean, you can upload files, download files, take screenshots of the Windows desktop. You can invoke a keystroke logger. You can invoke or, or turn on the webcam on that remote machine. I mean, you can do pretty much anything. You control services, whatever, right? And so this apparently, from what I understand, is the same sort of thing here that the attackers could be able to do, or could possibly, I, I should say, be able to do with this Samba flaw. Now, this is from Shodan.io, and this is just a site which 
it's kind of like a search engine, you know, searching for vulnerable computers out on the internet. And you can see there that it's got a lot of computers that it's found with port 445 open and exposed to the internet. It blows me away that port 445 is exposed anywhere on the internet. I mean, who does that? I mean, really, who does that? I, it, that is just completely contrary to all good security practice. Never expose your Samba or your SMB port to the internet. You just don't do it, okay? Just don't. But anyway, uh, according to the Shodan computer search engine, more than 485,000 Samba-enabled computers exposed port 445 on the internet. And according to researchers at Rapid7, the makers of Metasploit, more than 104,000 internet-exposed endpoints appear to be running vulnerable versions of Samba, out of which 92,000 are running unsupported versions of Samba. Okay, well, that's not good. So, Samba is the SMB protocol implemented on Linux and Unix systems. So, some experts are saying that it is the Linux version of Eternal Blue, which is the exploit that's used by the WannaCry ransomware. And so they say, well, or should I say Samba Cry? Well, okay, I guess it's a good name for it as any. And also keep in mind that with the number of vulnerable systems and the ease of exploiting this vulnerability, the Samba flaw could be exploited at large scale with wormable capabilities. Worms, nasty, nasty, nasty. And yes, Linux systems are susceptible to worms if they're not secured properly. And so here is the exploit code, which is released. And the Rapid7 people and their Metasploit team were very, very quick on the draw here to create the exploit to trigger this flaw. And all it took was just this one line, this simple create pipeline here. That's all it took in order to create this malicious code. So patches and mitigations, well, the maintainers of Samba already patched the issue in the newer versions of Samba in 4.6.4, 4.5.10, 4.4.14. So if you are running a fairly recent version of Linux or Unix, then you've probably gotten the thing fixed already just by doing a normal update. If you haven't been doing updates here in the last couple of weeks, go ahead and do it. Just do an update get it over with, get it patched. But then again, there are some older versions, or at the time that this was written, I should say, there were some older versions which they were not patching. Now, a little bit later on, we'll see an update where it says that they have patched the older versions. I haven't looked to see which older versions they've patched. I assume that maybe that they've patched the old 3.5 versions and up, I don't know. But anyway, if you can't upgrade to the latest versions of Samba immediately, then you can just open that smb.com file and put this NT pipe support equals no line in there. Might affect a little bit of functionality, but at least you will be protected for the time being until you can get an upgrade, update done. And then once you do that, just restart the SMB daemon. And yeah, down here at the bottom, it says Samba maintainers have also provided patches for older and unsupported versions of Samba. Ah, so even unsupported ones. So that's good. Also, something else here is that there are some network attached storage devices out there which use Samba to share out directories. And so you need to pay attention to them as well and make sure that they get updated. Now, as I said before, just don't expose port 445 to the internet. Now, if you have your devices all behind a NATIT firewall where nothing is exposed to the internet, uh, I would say there's probably not quite as much danger. However, there possibly could be a danger if somebody were to break through the firewall and break into your network via another means you know, then they could possibly break in. But, uh, you know, under normal circumstances, probably not that big of a deal. But still, go ahead and get it patched anyway. Get it patched as soon as possible, and that way you'll be covered. 
So uh, Netgear released a security advisory saying a large number of its routers and network attached storage product models are affected by the flaw because they use Samba 3.5 or later. But the company currently released firmware fixes for only the ready NAS products running OS 6.x. Okay, so I don't know much about Netgear products. So if you do have a Netgear product, then that will affect you. And we have another article about that from the register. Fat Thumbed Dev Slashes Samba Security. And it pretty much tells the same stuff that we've already gone over. And HD Moore is the creator of Metasploit. And yes, HD is his name. He has no actual name. His parents gave all their kids initials. And that's it, okay? Don't know why, but that's the way they did it. But uh, the story that I was told was that all the kids in the family except for HD, decided when they got older that they didn't want just initials. They actually wanted names, so they went to court and changed their names to actual names. But HD is said, hey, this is kind of cool, so he kept it as HD Moore. And Samba Flaw puts 100,000 machines at risk of WannaCry-style attack. Uh, Rapid7 warns that 90% of vulnerable machines can't be patched. And as I said, that's probably not true anymore because the Samba people have released patches for the older versions of Samba as well. Okay, so pretty much more of the same there that we've already seen. And, uh, oh, except this, what's more, Rapid7 also warns that many enterprise backup systems use Samba to send data to NAS or other types of backup servers. So a direct attack or worm would render those backups almost useless so if patching cannot be done immediately, we recommend creating an offline copy of critical data as soon as possible. So, yeah, so yeah, as I said, you know, keep your Samba devices, your any SMDB devices, behind that NAT at firewall on the internal network. Never expose it to the internet, right? So that will help protect you from direct attacks. But if somebody were to break into your network and plant a worm or if somebody on the network, some authorized user on the network were to open up an attachment with a worm and somehow trigger that, then yeah, that could be a problem. It could wreak havoc on your Samba machines, on your, your network attached storage or your file servers or whatever else is using Samba. Now, uh, having said all that, I don't mean to be causing any undue panic because you, know, you might have some protection against this already because remember, there are a couple of different systems out there which can help protect your network. And uh, for example, Ubuntu, SUSE products have something called App Armor, which is designed to help protect your systems from this type of attack. And also, if you have any type of Red Hat system, and I'm talking here about Red Hat Enterprise, Fedora, or CentOS, or Scientific Linux, or Oracle Linux, then you have something called SE Linux, which, which can also help prevent against these types of attacks. Now, the problem with SE Linux is that it does have kind of a bad rap for being hard to deal with, hard to administer. Uh, that's not necessarily the case. At one time, yeah, it was. It's not so much anymore. It's gotten a little bit easier, especially if you have the SE Troubleshoot package installed on your systems. So a lot of people do turn the SE Linux off. Not a good thing. So right here, I'm just going to give you a, a pitch right now. If you really want to protect your systems against these types of flaws, which could pop up, and you're running a Red Hat type system, do not turn off the SE Linux. Learn to deal with it. Learn to deal with the SE Linux, and it will help you out tremendously. Okay? And then the final thing is another type of ransom racket, which doesn't have much to do with computers. This has to do with monkeys. Monkey Mafia, steal your stuff, then sell it back for a cracker. So, long-tailed macaques living near and Indonesian temple have figured out how to run a ransom racket on visiting tourists. The monkeys grab valuables such as glasses, hats, cameras, or in one case, a wad of cash from the ticket booth, and then wait for the temple staff to offer them food before dropping their ill-gotten gains and dashing off with the tasty prize. 
So anyway, folks, I think that's pretty much all for now. So if you like what you see here, be sure to like and subscribe and check back for more videos. I do plan on adding some more at a little bit more rapid pace than I have been now that I've got a little bit more time. But anyway, you take care and we'll see you next time.